Welcome back. Today we are on the scene with our first ever guest, Miss Hannah Blankenship. She is the editor in chief of The Reflector, so she is our boss technically. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for having me as your first guest. Very honored. We're so excited to have Hannah here on the podcast today, guys. We are going to talk tea today. What are we talking about today, Hannah? So we're going to talk about my most recent article, which was about diversity in Greek life at MSU. So definitely some, some tea to talk about here, oh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> so we'll have the article linked down below if you want to go ahead and read that. But basically, we're going to deep dive on some of the stuff that Hannah covered in the article, as well as go over some stuff that was not mentioned. So some exclusive on-the-scene pod TV. Or not TV. Uh, some exclusive on-the-scene pod knowledge, I guess. <laughs> TV. TV. <laughs> so diversity in Greek life. First of all, let's let Hannah introduce herself a little bit more. So what's your major? What are your hobbies? Like, what's a little bit about you? OK, so I'm Hannah. I'm a senior here at Mississippi State, journalism major, also Spanish major, business minor. So just Whoa. Some, yeah, some variety there. Um, so my hobbies would be, I mean, you know, it's kind of basic, hanging out with friends. I do love playing sports, soccer, um, you know, some running to blow off some steam, that kind of thing. Also love reading, usually not during school time though, because, you know, it gets pretty busy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a little bit more about me. Sounds good. So now we're going to talk about the article. So first of all, how, what was it like when you first got the idea to write this article? What made you want to like kind of put it in the paper or write it for your class? Yes, excellent question. So really as a journalist, what I do is just answer the questions that I've always had myself. And so just looking at Greek life, so I'm not in Greek life, and so I kind of have the outside perspective. Just looking at it, I see basically you've got like your white greek life and you've got your black greek life like mm -hmm. simply put and i think anyone with eyes mm -hmm. can really see that right so i've always just had a question about that like why why is that like how is that okay like mm -hmm. it's 2021 you know that kind of thing so basically just wanted to get to the root of it talk to the people who know um talk to people in greek life talk to people over greek life and just see like honestly get their perspectives on it mm -hmm. and just understand, I guess, more from all sides of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. so the article, if you haven't read it yet, it follows along basically Raylon Johnson. She is she was the president of Chi Omega sorority last year, the first ever black uh, panhellenic president period of any um, panhellenic sorority. So basically it just talks at about MSU. at MSU, sorry, <laughs> of, at MSU. I forget sometimes we're in like a little bubble here, mm -hmm. but they're outsiders. So Raylan Johnson was the first black president. So what was something surprising, I guess, that came out of your conversation with her? There were a lot of surprising things that came out um, of the conversation with her. I kind of talked to someone in Cayo first, and she kind of gave me their name. And I also heard her name from Jackie Mullen, the Panhellenic, or the director of Fr Fraternity and Sorority Life. Um, so, but she was just so kind to talk to, so wonderful. And really what really touched me was at the end of the interview, she was like, I really appreciated you asking me to do the interview. Like, she was like, I haven't had a lot of people really ask about my experience. Um, I think what I really huh. liked were the details that she kind of gave me that just exemplified, I guess, like the cultural difference of like growing up where she did and then coming into something like Kayo and just kind of funny things. Like one thing she mentioned was that she didn't know what poppy seed chicken was and, like, <laughs> a lot. Like they were just talking about it and she's like, what's that? Like I didn't know. Yeah. So just small things like that. And then also this didn't make it in the article. There were so many good details that didn't make it. She said that. Um, there was one other African-American girl in the sorority with her and she was on the dance team and she said people would come up to her all the time and be like, are you on the dance team? Oh. And she was like, and we look drastically different. Uh -huh. Like I have short oh, yes. hair, she has like long curly hair, uh -huh. something like that. And so, and she was, she was just so lighthearted about it, but she was like, she was making the joke. She was like, all of y'all look the same. Like your sorority girls yeah. have like the same yeah, thing, like Mary literally. something. And she's like, and I can tell all y'all apart and like your names apart. And she's like, so like, and it's, it's like, like, there, like there are effort. two black people like in the sorority. Two. And it's like, so she was just very fun to talk to very lighthearted about it. Very just kind, but also saying like, there were some, she was like, I did have some comments of people just like ignorant. She was like, some uh -huh. people you could tell just literally had never interacted with black people before, which was like shocking to Wait, me. Wait, like well, people in the sorority? Yeah, she was like, you could tell that they just grew up probably, you know, at their white private school with their mm -hmm. white families. And I mean, and that's not necessarily their fault, you know? And so she was very understanding about it. She was like, that's not their fault. Like that's the background they came from. And she was like, no one was ever like rude to me or anything like that. And she was like, and I didn't really feel ever singled out by my race, but she was like, some people would sometimes just ask questions that were kind of ignorant and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
So I think what I always think of is just like walking into the room and you're the only person yes. of that race or of that gender. Because as a like a white woman, that really doesn't happen to us no, in specific. Like I've been to like the only woman in a room full of men, but yeah. not the only white person in a room full of people of color or anything mm -hmm. like that. And I think that's such like. And if you ever have had that experience, you know that you, you do feel like you stick out a little bit. Yeah, and you so, feel very isolated. Yeah, and so just for her to be so, I guess, bold in going mm -hmm. into that, um, which is so much confidence and all of that, I just like really, really respected her. I came out respecting her so much from that interview. I so. know, and the fact that her mother was like an Alpha Kappa Alpha, and she was really mm -hmm. like, I think you should do this, but she was like, no, I'm thinking Kayo. That's so interesting to think about the way that your family wants you to kind of yes. be something. Mm -hmm. So could you kind of tell me a little bit more about like, I guess, the the relationship or just like the details of like being in a black sorority versus being in like a you know panhellenic tri yeah. typically white sorority yeah so it, well sororities and fraternities are so interesting because it's so it's kind of a lifelong commitment mm -hmm. um and so there's a lot of legacy and family i guess pressure that comes with it on both sides mm -hmm. and so that's kind of i guess a part of the reason why it's quote unquote segregated is you know, it's something that originated like a hundred years ago when things were segregated and it's so based on the legacy system and family loyalty, things like that, that it just continues being the same way it is. Mm -hmm. um, as for differences between the traditionally white and traditionally black fraternities and sororities, Raylan was saying there's a good amount of differences. They just do things differently. Um, I think they're like Panhellenic calls it rush and National Panhellenic calls it like intake or recruitment. Mm -hmm. I can't quite remember. Um, and so just different things like that. And also the numbers too, this was kind of shocking, but there's only 84 members of NPHC um, at Mississippi State and there's like 4,000 between IFC and Panhellenic. And yeah, so I didn't realize wow. how small it was. Yeah, and just the difference. And that's part of the reason they don't have houses on campus mm -hmm. and their numbers. Mm -hmm. It's just all like, everything is so wrapped up in itself and just kind of complicated um, and just goes way back. Like it's a lot of history. And that was what was interesting to learn is at face value when you look at it, you're like, okay, white, black, but when you look at it, it's like, well, okay, the white fraternities and sororities did not let black people in for a long time. So that explains a lot, you know, but then you look at it and you look at the current efforts of diversity and it's just a very complicated, it becomes a very complicated thing because you also don't want tokenism. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, mm -hmm. how do you recruit yeah. for diversity, mm -hmm. but also by not just like typing someone as their race, you know? Yeah. Also, I think going back to the whole like legacy system and just like family like families have their sorority or fraternity that they all seem to be part of or at least they're part of like a certain council whether it's national panhellenic or just panhellenic right. they you know tend to like be in those type of groups so if you're a kayo your daughter's gonna be a kayo and your granddaughter or yes. they're at least gonna be a five you or something similar yes. so in this situation it's so interesting to think like we have to start separating that yeah. Like, you can't just have legacy after legacy after legacy because, like, who's fresh coming in? There's also the thing about getting into them. You usually have to have, like, a letter of recommendation. You have to have, like, five You have to have letters. a bunch of them. Yeah. Yes. And if you didn't have that connection, like, right. a complete, like, whole group mm -hmm. of legacy members to reach out to for that, you're kind of put at a disadvantage. Yes. yes. No, that's very true. And I think that's something that they're actually working on. I think Jackie Mullen mentioned that. They have it, like, redone their legacy process. And I think part of it is... They either loosen the restrictions on recommendation letters, something like that. So mm -hmm. I think all of that is kind of under review, basically. That's good. So, well, that's a possibility. Yes, yeah. they're definitely. There's there's so many different opinions on it, and I'm here to just offer the perspective yeah. of the you know professionals on it. But mm -hmm. um, they are they have like a diversity. Um, I think it's I can't remember like some kind of task force you mm -hmm. know, where they really look at all of that. They looked at the prices, mm -hmm. tried to cut those as much as they could. Um, looked at the legacy system, that kind of thing. But then other people will say, oh, well, it's all for show. It doesn't actually mean anything. And then some people are like, no, they're genuinely wanting to do mm -hmm. make this effort. At the same time, it's an effort for both sides of the road, too. Exactly. For anything to actually get done. Which it's is not going to happen overnight, either. So. It's not going to happen overnight. Rome was not built in a day. Mm -hmm. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. And I think really how I ended the article summarizes that in the sense that Jackie Mullen was like, at the end of the day, it's a community effort. And I think mm -hmm. that's so true. I think it comes down to your interpersonal relationships. Um, I think it comes down to your personal efforts as a person. Um, and that's really how it's going to be built out from that, is both sides as a community coming together. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what was something that was really hard about writing this article for you? Yeah, so it was definitely a bit of a touchy topic, um, as everyone knows. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so yeah. it was kind of a little scary to dive into that. And my biggest thing was I just tried so hard to be balanced on both sides. And mm -hmm. so I was a little afraid that, you know, just I'm coming from a certain perspective as person, as everyone does. And so I tried so hard not to let that influence anything. And so, you know, I hope that's how it turned out. But 
I did the best I could on that. So I think that was the hardest thing was just making sure that I did not let any mm-hmm. type of like personal bias or anything mm-hmm. like that come into it. So that was probably the most difficult thing, but I just wanted to get everyone's perspective from all the different sides. So Yeah, well to me it reads pretty equal, but I have seen some comments online. Yes. So how have the comments saying that, you know, it's bias or it's not true affected you and you know, the way that you kind of stand up for your article for your work. Right. Yes, no, there have definitely been several comments that have been, you know, this should be taken down, this is, you know, completely inaccurate. Mostly, the ones I've seen have been from people supporting the Divine Nine and things like that, or saying they were in the Divine Nine. And so at first I was like, oh no, because I that is not my intention at all. Like, I definitely want everything to be equal. And also, though, whatever is said in the article is not me saying it. Yeah. Like, if there is a problem with someone saying something, it's them saying it. You know, yeah. it's their opinion. It's So it's kind of mm-hmm. almost like, you know, if toes are stepped on, it might be because it's the truth. Um, so that that does happen. Yeah, like I get um, a lot of issues with my opinion articles, exactly. but they're opinions. So you, you can, as opinion editor, you used to comments that are. They, I am used to being skip, called out. They skip and, the whole. I didn't like this part to the whole. This is the trash. Yeah, this they is say the worst this is trash. I've they attack read. the writers. Yes, they attack the content. This is a sorry excuse for journalism. And it it's be taken down like, immediately. And it's just like yes. guys. It's yes. an opinion. If you don't agree with it, it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It's just different. Exactly. I feel like you definitely have the most experience with that for sure. So, so. And also, like, the hate comments, if they're just hate saying it's not true, but, like, it literally is true, then, yes. I, mean, what do you, I mean, what do you say about <laughs> that also? It's like, I mean, if you're going to tear someone down, why don't you say what's true? If you're yes. going to offer a correction, like, offer it. See, in someone my opinion. did offer a correction because I had originally mm-hmm. said that um, – I said AKA was the first um, Divine Nine, mm-hmm. but I had misread it and it was the first women's Divine Nine um, organization. And so someone called me on that and I was like, thank you so much. Like, yeah. I'm so glad you caught that. Yes. So we issued a correction on that. Um, so that kind of thing, that's totally fine feedback. But when they're just like, this is horrible and for whatever, and they don't say why, I don't know. You know, It's so, not gonna help anything. <clears throat> right, so comments like I definitely wanted to be, um, you know, non-biased, everything mm-hmm. be equal. And so I really hope it was, but at some point, yes, it's what was said in the article, not me that they have an issue with. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Well, the important part to remember is that you were unbiased, and you know, you're doing your best, but, I mean, the people in the article, of course, can express their opinions, yes. because it's not about you, it's about yeah, the people exactly. themselves. Um, I guess, let me think. Do you have any questions? While I'm, I'm just thinking? here for the you're ride. You're just here for the ride? I'm enjoying <laughs> listening to everything. So. Uh, do you have any, like, little funny stories that maybe Raylan mentioned, or just, like, any other little moments that didn't quite make it to the article, but you thought would you, you yeah, like to share? Yeah, yeah, again, and she was so, so kind and so funny, but kind of how I opened the article about her mentioning the tennis skirts mm-hmm. was also funny. She I thought like, that was so funny. She was like, I thought, I was like, why is everyone wearing tennis skirts? And this is something, as an outside Greek person, I've also oh, wondered. Oh, absolutely. Because I've been like, where did that trend really come from, and why? And she, like, she was like, I thought they were, like, on the tennis team, and I was <laughs> like I mean honestly I understand that because I've been like where did that trend come from why did we start that um so I just thought that was so funny um another thing that didn't make it in though and is I actually did two other interviews that didn't make it in I did um I interviewed the president of MGC um the multicultural Greek council um so because I I honestly didn't know we had a multicultural Greek Mm -hmm. council and so I was like well that's you know that's great like that's kind of what we're talking about is and so that was the one um organization that did not have like an ethnic majority of any sense they Mm -hmm. had I don't know like 36 percent this 18 percent this that kind of thing so but they are 11 people in total which is 0.25 percent of the entire Greek population oh so that's the reason that most people don't know about them Mm -hmm. and so it's going to take a lot of time for Mm -hmm. that to build up and to Mm -hmm. actually be a real force here but I'm so glad that that's something that's been started I think that's an awesome awesome thing um, so that was really interesting to talk to her about that. But if, if I had more space to write the article, it could have been like 10,000 words. Oh, yeah, and I absolutely. could have included all of that. I would have done so many more interviews. Yes. Um, but I just like barely could fit in what I had already. So I feel the struggle all I'm, too I well. Say, I yeah. think I'm just thinking about your <laughs> Crepe Myrtle article. Heather does feel that I just struggle. read an article today about Crepe Myrtle. Somehow it was 1,000 words. <laughs> I don't, I don't exactly. know how. Yeah, exactly. But at some point, there's just a story that you find, and it's just so interesting. Right. I think also, um, going back to you know like the divine nine and those organizations only having 70 how many members did they have 84 members and also the multicultural council only having 11 members so is there a sort of like a push for increased involvement in those activities so i did ask actually both of their presidents ngc and nphc that and honestly they seem almost like content where they are i know ngc i think they said they weren't doing intake this semester or something to um 
train their members better, that kind of thing. So it doesn't seem that they're, you know, super based around numbers. And so also something that is um, coming with NPHC potentially is a um, Greek life like facility on campus since they don't have houses it would be kind of like one facility but again like them increasing their numbers is something that's really going to make mm-hmm. that role mm-hmm. is so that they can have I mean more dues that kind of thing um, and so he kind of talked about that as if like they could start trying to do that but they weren't really currently and so I think and also they've mentioned the um, benefits of having small groups of people and mm-hmm. it just like really increases the brotherhood the sisterhood yeah so I think they really honestly like that um, aspect of it um, so I didn't get the impression that they were super trying mm-hmm. to just increase for numbers for the sake of numbers. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't no, always have good, to be the point. It's a good question. I mean, it does, that is part of the whole reason, you know, maybe like less influence, a lot smaller, mm-hmm. but I think there's definitely benefits to that. So, yeah, I think in your article as well, you mentioned, you know, the historically black or, you know, non like white sororities and fraternities or have like more traditions, more like, you know, showcases they perform, like stuff that's more like. You have to be in it to know. Right. Whereas I feel like traditional, like national pain, or they're weird. I was so I was in a sorority actually, and there are so many weird we things. You. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so many weird traditions and things that yes. they have I that think are that's just all Greek life, and they're all just like outdated too. Is the thing right. they just won't change them because they're tradition, but they don't make any sense. Yeah. And they're not cool. There's nothing really that rooted in anything. It just sounds like <laughs> they just came up with a bunch of stuff and were like, yeah. Yeah. This is good. Yes, the larger discussion on Greek life as a whole is just a very interesting entity. So this is just one aspect of it that's interesting. But yeah, like you said, there's a lot of, yeah. A lot there's of a lot to unpack there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I think that was all the questions I have. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add for our discussion I of really Greek life? I think so. Just that, I mean, everyone that I interviewed was so kind and helpful, and I really appreciated that. Um, so, you know, and if anyone has any issues with the article, feel free to talk to me about it, for sure. But um, I did my very best to be um, look at it from all sides. Yeah, absolutely. So again, we'll have that link down below. It'll be probably the first link that you see. If you want to read Hannah's article after you finish listening to this, or at the same time, you could listen and read at the same time, multitasking. (laughs) Yeah, you can follow along. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you can. All right, so next we're going to transition into story updates. So last week we talked about a couple of stories that were impending updates. One of them we are very excited about. Yes. Blackjack Road is finished, everyone. Thank goodness. Yes. God it bless is America. finished. Um, there's no official article update yet, but we'll probably run something soon. But it is finished. It's looking smooth over there. Yeah, looking good. You can go see it for yourself. Three lanes. Mm-hmm. We are very so excited smooth. about Doesn't this. It destroy your car immediately. I know. You don't feel like wow. you're just about to die <laughs> going yeah. down the road because yeah. it's so narrow and there's oh, like yeah. Absolutely. And, it's oh, so yeah. funny because last week we were just saying, whoever knows how long that's going to take. I know. And it then now, happen. Well, I'm so happy to be wrong about that. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, That's great. And our next update, the Highland shooter was caught from last week. We were talking about the chase and everything like that. So the dispatch actually wrote an article. I was talking about a Sartville Daily one, but I never did find that one. So the dispatch staff report updated on that. So two people were arrested in connection with the murder. That was a little scary. So many, like, shootings, breaking news. There is a lot of shootings in Starkville somehow. Yeah. 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 So if you'd like to read the full update on that, we'll link that down as well. That was written by the Dispatch Staff Reports. Yeah, that's super interesting. That's something that we tried to cover, but they would not give us any information. Yeah. Yeah. Forever. That's what we had said last week, too. (laughs) Yeah. So definitely glad to actually get an update on the story, although I'm sad we couldn't have run something ourselves. I feel like that's just kind of a difficult subject, though, because you don't want to ruin someone's life if you're wrong. Yes, so yes. They, I, mean, I think they kind of try to keep that under wraps they keep until it very they know close for sure. Until it's official. For yeah, sure, so yeah. And sense. even, like, not one person wrote that article. I guess it was, like, the staff kind of yeah. did a little yeah. com- combination type thing. Okay. <laughs> Next section is the ones that got away. A.K.A. what didn't make the paper this week. Okay, so we just have a few stories. Um, the first one was a feature about the Office of Survivor Support. I've been trying to get this in the paper for weeks, but it just like keeps falling through. So hopefully it'll be online only later, sometime after uh, pa- the paper comes out. Um, I'm just really wanting to feature on them. I think they're a great organization. Yeah, they're a great organization. Uh, I've been working with them for my PR writing class. They were our client for this semester. And I've just learned so much about them. They have so many services to help people. And re- it's for uh, survivors of sexual assault. And uh, there's just so many good things that it can do for people. Both yeah. that has happened before they were coming here, if it happened while they were here, mm-hmm. 
they're there for you. So check it out. Yeah. So I hope we can get a story on that up. I really, really want to. A next uh, topic would be the trash and fashion show. <laughs> um, I simply did not know any information about this. I tried to look up stuff, but I could not find a single thing. So that just kind of fell through. Also, it's just like a fun topic. It was kind of like if I didn't really have anything to push. Um, that was hope, for the fashion board. Yeah, that was by for the, the fashion way. board. I hope that went well. I, I could put a side note on that. I think we were asked for newspapers to use for that because a lot of times they do newspaper dresses. <gasps> oh, oh yes. really? And on another side note is that the story that I'm um, putting in either this paper's this week's paper or uh, next, next week. week. Next yeah. week. Okay. Um, so it's about um, a fashion major, and she graduated but got killed a month after graduation. Oh, wow. Um, in a tragic shooting um, in Jackson, and so she actually the pictures we have are, of her are. From the trash and fashion oh, show. Oh, so. man. That's so sweet. So, yeah, we'll that's have. That's sad, though. Yeah, that's yeah, so no, sad. It's very tragic. But, um, so, yeah, stay tuned for that that article. Yeah, so <laughs> on a heavy note, I guess. Oh. <laughs> that's so interesting. And then, last one, or no, we have two more. Sorry. A lot didn't make Get paper, ahead of I guess. Yourself. So um, Josh Foreman, our faculty advisor, came up with an idea just to talk about the IHL, the inter what's it called? The Institutions of Higher Learning. Yeah, the Institutions of Higher Learning. I always like They've like, been under a lot of pressure lately about a lot of things. Yeah, they've been under a lot of pressure, and just faculty are, like, critical of them because they're government appointees. And I just simply do not have enough brain power at the moment to, like, think of that article and like how to frame it and everything it's a lot, it's a lot. so we may come back to that in the spring but as for right now that's what didn't make the paper that and then was super interesting yeah. I did the original article on how they weren't going to do a vaccine mandate mm -hmm. like I went to one of their mm -hmm. meetings and you know they were pretty adamant about it um, I think the two doctors on their board did want um, the vaccine mandate but they were pretty adamant about no and then yeah like he said complete 180 on mm -hmm. it I mean, I think it comes down to federal funding. They realized mm -hmm. that they were going to yeah. lose their funding, and then they were like, well, we have to do this. Uh, yeah. It's not, it's not yeah. us. Yeah. So. It definitely would be interesting to get into. It's just, like, so much at the current moment. Yes. yes. And also, I for stuff like that, I love to see how it evolves over time. So I'd love to see how this happens in the spring after everyone has to get vaccinated or all the employees do. And just see right. like, what people are thinking. This is a fascinating topic, and it affects us here at the Reflector, too, because uh, we're employees, technically. Mm -hmm. So everyone here has to be vaccinated as well. So, And it's been a push back already to, what, January, I think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, by the, the federal mandate. Yeah. yeah, so it will be interesting to see how it evolves, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And the last story that didn't make the paper this week is there was some construction going on about, by the hand lab that people were complaining about, apparently. And then there were, like, police cars with sirens. I never went out and checked that out. I think I was doing something. But if something happens by the hand lab, you know, I'll update. We'll see. But if there's just, like, a little bit of construction, like, digging up dirt, if they're not really doing something big, I don't really feel the need to, yeah. you know, push a story on that. There was, like, that. a bunch of stuff rushing over there. It was, like, earlier last week, I think. And I just kept hearing sirens everywhere. Things were, like, rushing past I know. Me. Every I'm time like, I hear a siren, I'm just like, You're like no <laughs> rushing there. You're like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry to whoever's involved, but please, God, no. <gasps> that hit. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just news editing things. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Why did you put red in such small letters? Because it went. I had it literally, like, it took up half the page. Because oh. I like things to be cohesive. Next up, we have Emma's Opinion Corner. Yay. So, our first thing is the hot take of the week. What is it this week? This week, we are talking about children on leashes. Oh. <laughs> I had realized I had talked about food for two uh, straight hot takes so we're gonna try and do something different children on leashes um yes. i'd love to hear your opinion first yeah. so my opinion is you should put your children on leashes because <laughs> i was a bad child so i'm a twin and i was like my mom and dad we were their first children so they got twins right off the bat Lucky. and so like when we were in like walkers and stuff we would like run the opposite direction in our walkers and they couldn't catch us because we were going the opposite way. So we would do the same thing when we were just walking around. We'd run opposite directions. So I was like, yes, we should be on leashes. We were bad children. And it's like, it's not like you're putting it around their neck or something. They have like a harness on them. So it's not like inhumane. Yeah. And it keeps your kid close to you. So it's like, so they can't wander off or get taken. It's for their own good. It's right. for their own good. So I think, yes. That is a Children on leashes is good. <laughs> I don't even know how you thought of that. That's so funny. What are your um, thoughts, Heather? I... I don't know. I would say I disagree, but not really like in a hard hitting way. Like I just do whatever you want to do. But like when I see a child on the leash, I just have to laugh. Like I think it's <laughs> yeah. so silly. It's like a little monkey backpack and yes. it has like a it's monkey always, tail as a leash. A yes. I mean, it works. Like if you're a bad kid, go ahead and leash up your kid. But if I was leashed as a kid, no. But I've always been a very like, just like 
minded my business type person. Like I wasn't like I I, I would walk away, but not run away like Emma and her brother did. We were <laughs> double trouble. Was our nickname. Trouble. So, so I just think it's on a case by case basis. Yeah. We That's fair. That's we got fair. into a lot of bad That's things fair. as children. I won't <laughs> even go into all of what we did. But <laughs> Hannah, what's your Hannah hot take? My opinion. Okay, right off the bat, um, I really I see where you're coming from. You have good backup for that opinion. Yeah, I'm glad you went um, first. I do agree mm-hmm. with Heather. It could be a case by case basis, but you know your point that it keeps them safe by keeping them close. It doesn't hurt them. You know you. Have yeah. A good point. Yeah. Yes. It's especially good at like Disney World and stuff, right. or like at the amusement park if they're running scenarios. around. Certain That's scenarios. what I'm saying. Like if you're in a bunch of crowds and stuff, I mean, keep them close. I to want you. children to have freedom, you know, to frolic. Yeah. Or something. Well, you don't have to keep them on the leash. <laughs> it's not like they're bound to that leash. You can take the leash off. In certain cases, it could be for their safety. <laughs> they're only allowed to be on a leash ever. I was <laughs> That's it. Say, it's not like they're <laughs> stuck like that. It's like a dog. You can take it off. And they can go run around. They're not stuck like that. That is so funny. <laughs> they can have fun. Okay, so next up, we're going to talk about Red, Red. Taylor's, Taylor's version. version. Okay, I'm going to take over this section now. <laughs> so, I'm, waiting for this. I'm dressed in red for the occasion. I have my plaid shirt days, my red turtleneck. Anyway, um, I think that Red, Taylor's version, is a masterpiece. I, every song sounds, like, similar but different. And just hearing her mature vocals, seeing those, like, painful lyrics, like, really brings a tear to my eye, really, truly. It really plucks your heart It really does. And... <laughs> The vault tracks? She did not have to go that hard. She did not have to go that when hard. When I told that to my brother, I was like, yeah, there's like 30 songs on this album now. He's like, excuse me. A casual two hour and 10 minute listening piece. <laughs> um, my favorite tracks are Better Man from The Vault, Babe from The Vault, um, I Bet You Think About Me from The Vault. Well, yeah, those are all my favorites from The Vault. Um, I mean, The Vault as a whole. Are they from The Vault? Yeah, they're just all from The Vault. And All Too Well 10-minute version. When she goes into that other chorus, or that other verse, instead of going into the chorus, I was like, what are we doing here? What is this? Okay, the short film for that. It slaps. We watched it together. It It was very very good. good. We watched it together on the couch. It was great. It was great. They should get Emmys for acting. I mean, truly, I was very mad at Dylan O'Brien. I, I really didn't like, like him, yeah. <laughs> Mm-mm. And, like, I was indifferent about him before, but I really didn't like him in that. I know, like, and he's such a sweetheart in real life. Yeah. He apologized after the film screening. I thought that was so <laughs> sweet. Like, so what are your favorites from the album, from the vault, or just in general? My favorite in general is probably begin. Actually, I have too many. I'm sorry. I'm just going to take over this whole thing. Go oh, my God. I'm trying to remember the name of them now. I Since there's so many, I have only listened to it through once and That's I was never like a huge like I didn't really get into Taylor Swift until mm-hmm, later mm-hmm. in like 2012 I was in that stage where I was like agreeing with everybody where they're like yeah Taylor Swift I just didn't really listen to her then so the and the Phoebe Bridgers, we got the here? Phoebe Bridgers, oh, I do love nothing Phoebe Bridgers. new. I can't believe she let Phoebe sing a verse, like not only just a verse, but like a lot of the song. Her first full female. Which one? This isn't like Holy Ground. Is that the name? Holy of Ground one? is okay, one of I my like all time faves. I really the new like production that one. is so quiet in the beginning. It just like kind of goes in, and it's like I was reminiscent. And I thought that was so different. I will say I will always jam to Taylor Swift's Twenty Two. Oh, absolutely. I jammed on my twenty second birthday. It was an experience. Oh, and also, um, Girl at Home, the production is so different, but I'm loving it. I think it, like, really adds some new life to that song, because people didn't really like that song. I've always liked it, but now I'm just like, this is a bop. Like, it's certified. Mm -hmm. Um, But the whole album in general, all I've been listening to this weekend is that, so, like... It's been a very emotional time here. (laughs) A brief interruption from editor Heather. Unfortunately, we lost the video footage for the last 10 minutes of the podcast, but we do still have the audio, so the rest of this will be audio only. So tune in to Hannah's hot take about the Red Album. What about you, Hannah, some faves? Well, so, you know, I feel like I might get more flack about this than my Greek life opinions, but um, <laughs> I, kind of similar to Emma, I was never super into Red. See, I, I wasn't I was either, like pretty, but this resurfaced it. Like, Love Story is one of the greatest songs ever created, in my oh opinion. My God, yeah. um, Very good. So, you know, those kind of, like, old Taylor, uh-huh. that's my vibe. I can okay, like, I feel that. sing to those, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was never super into the whole, like, Red and then, like, the Red Taylor's version. Yeah. I planned to go back and listen to Red and then Red Taylor's version so I could fully understand the hype. Mm-hmm. But, so I feel like I can't make an opinion right now. It's not educated enough. Okay. Mental well, health. I have been preparing for this for about a month. <laughs> yes. So I, you know, I was She's listening. She's been having a time. Mm-hmm. She had the ABBA come out. Yes. Their new album. Yes. Oh, my gosh. We've got Adele coming so out soon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. It's just been a whole time. 
and I just love Red. I was really preparing for it by listening to the like original version, but now like she's gone. Like we're not listening to her anymore. <laughs> oh um, yeah, I removed it from. Oh yeah, so she's dead. She's dead. She's dead. <laughs> I just love how her voice sounds, and it's so sweet because like she's looking back good. at it, and it's been like over like ten years since the big breakup yeah. and everything like that. And it's so nice knowing that she has Joe Alwyn now, her current boyfriend of like five years, and they're actually in love, and it's so sweet. I know. I know. I love Taylor Swift. I would die for her, literally. <laughs> okay, that was it for Red Taylor's version. Now we have a film review for Miss. Emma. Yes, the stream queen, as I'm known by Heather. <laughs> I love that. So this week we're going to cover The Harder They Fall. It's on Netflix. This sounds like an after movie from the title, is it? No. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was like, I hope not. <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't watch that. Really? I watch them for the trashy value. Absolutely not. Big so trashy value there. This is a western. Oh. Okay. okay. And uh, it was directed by... James Samuel. He's from London. A London and boy. And it was actually produced by Jay-Z, funnily enough. I was like, uh, I saw that after the fact, and I was like, huh, okay. So what was kind of different about this one is most Westerns are white people, <laughs> for the most part, and if they do decide to be inclusive, they typically kind of downplay them as a role, and they typically mm-hmm. aren't that, like, active. They're more yeah, of they're a just passive like a car- role. Yeah. And so for this one, it was kind of completely flipped on the head, and all of the, like, main characters were black, and they had, like, a couple of white people that showed up, but they were the passive ones. So it was Wow, a, I love that. It was very refreshing. Mm-hmm. I was like, yes. And also, they were so badass. <laughs> I was like, this is so cool. And the storytelling of it was just so great, too. So I would say that this is very similar to kind of how uh, Quentin Tarantino kind of does his type of movies but i would say it's not quite as gruesome which i don't necessarily hate it could be a good thing (laughs) it's not the worst thing in the world and also they like actually convey things without saying the n-word a million times so while this was in the western time which obviously that happened the director decided not to say that Mm -hmm. in this film the one time they were about to say it they go Oh, I think he was about to say nincompoop because, <laughs> like, she shot him dead before he even finished it. And he's like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I like that because so often I feel like, I mean, this is not my place to say this at all, but I feel like including the N-word just because you can because it's a historical piece, like, don't do that. That's what he was talking about. He was like, <laughs> just because it happened doesn't mean you have to say it a hundred times. Because it still yeah, harms yeah, those yeah, people that are still alive yeah. today. Yeah, like, it doesn't really add to, to me. It doesn't add anything to the storytelling, right. and I think that's it's cheap storytelling, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, it's like there are so many other words that you can use. Like, so if you can't say it without saying that, mm-hmm. then you're not a good writer. So, Ooh, that's the tea from tea. Emma. Yeah. So I really enjoyed the film. If you haven't seen it, I re- like recommend go see. It's got uh, Idris Elba, Regina King, Jonathan Majors, who's making an up and coming rise. He was on SNL this past Saturday. Okay. Um, Yesterday. Yes. <gasps> With Tay-Tay? Yes, yes. Oh, also, Taylor Swift did a bunch of performances. I need to go back and watch those, so that'll be in the next It was very episode. good. I'm so excited. <laughs> and then it's got, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this one. I didn't put a pronunciation one. Zazzy Beats. She like was in uh, Deadpool 2 oh. as Domino, if you've seen that. And then Lakeith Stanfield. He was in Get Out as the guy that they do the camera flash to, and he, like, freaks out. He was that one. So, yeah. It nice. was very good. If you want to watch it, I recommend what was it about besides just being Western? Uh, it was a revenge story. Oh. oh. So okay. uh, it starts off, and it's this little boy, and he's with his parents in like, their house. They're about to eat dinner. All of a sudden, they get a knock on the door. This is not spoiling anything because this literally happens in the first scene. But the guy comes in who's Idris Elba, and he shoots them dead oh, right wow. there and then carves a cross on his forehead of the little boy Dang. to remember him by. And that turns out to be Jonathan Majors, who becomes the protagonist, and he kind of goes on his revenge story of getting back at this guy. And then there's okay. some plot twist in there, but I won't reveal those. You'll have to see that for yourself. Oh. So, yes. Check it out. Okay, our next segment is the crazy story of the week. Yes. Uh, this week, we were in no short supply of crazy stories. <laughs> I was reading, my, I read through the newspaper every day o- online, not in like the actual copy, but like the, the, the dispatch, Starkville Daily, obviously news editor, you got to check up. Mm-hmm. Saw so many. This one stuck out to me, though. Um, a Starkville man was sentenced to 55 years for attempted kidnapping and assault of a what? child. 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, uh, so he attempted to kidnap a former family friend's child. This is written by The Dispatch. It's by Tyler B. Jones, who is my news writing reporting TA. I love her. She is such a good writer. I look up to her really a lot. So this was in February 2018. So he attempted to check out, um, I guess, his friend's child, a six-year-old from Sudeth Elementary School. Um, and he didn't have the parents' permission. And then he tried again a few days later. And then he was arrested twice. And he assaulted his, an officer on the second time. And he attempted to break out of Octavia County Jail. Good. Oh I would do it to you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so then, um, I guess this past Thursday, so it'll be two weeks from when y'all are listening to this, an Octavia Hall County court jury found Arnold guilty, the guy, both attempted kidnapping counts as well as attempted escape from jail and aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer. So Dang, not only did he try to kidnap this child twice, but he also tried to break out of jail and assault an officer in the process. I'm like, my dude. Wow. So um, the judge sentenced him to 25 years for the first attempt of kidnapping, um, 25 for the second, and then they added five years suspended with a post-release supervision, five years for attempted escape, and five years for assaulting the officer. So he's going to be in for a while. And he's already spent um, almost four years in prison, so it's going to be credited to that. But basically, this article was pretty beefy for a, like a. Yeah, uh, this, this man does not look young either. He's basically gonna be a man no, old. he is. Um, he is forty eight years old. Oh, yep. So he's about to spend the rest he's of his gonna life, be his in, whole prison. life in there. Yeah, it's just so scary. Can you imagine like your child getting kidnapped from school no, that's, by yes. like one of your friends? No, no. That, that would be terrifying. That would be terrifying. Yeah. So that's this week's scary story of the week. We'll keep you updated. Scary story. Oh, it's not scary. You mean crazy? It's crazy. Well, it is it's scary. scary. Too, it's scary okay. and crazy. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We didn't leave off on the most positive note. Yeah, but, but we are so excited to have our first guest, Hannah, yes. here today. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. A pleasure. It was so much fun. We will continue to have guests just ever so randomly. It just depends on whatever occurs. But we are so happy to have you this week to talk about Greek life and diversity. And we'll be here next week. We want to go ahead and start plugging our social media. Yes. So you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at On The Scene Pod. And you can email us at onthescenepod at gmail.com if you'd like to be a guest on the podcast or if you have any comments, questions, or hot takes you'd like us to ask or feature, I guess. And you can also follow The Reflector. Their social media will be linked down below. It's reflector-online.com. If you didn't know, I'm the news editor, and Emma is the opinion editor, and Hannah, of course, is the editor-in-chief. Editor in <laughs> so we are just a full Reflector family over here, mm-hmm. and we'll also have all the articles will be linked down below with proper credit and everything like that. So shout out to those people for writing them. Good work. And uh, stay tuned for next time. Yeah, stay tuned for next time. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.